welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and a new fog puzzle which somehow seems appropriate in this absolutely dire British summer that we're currently enduring yet another day of pouring rain. Quite awful. Uh, no fog I suppose and the fog is just in the computer screen. Um, but you will know if you are a fan of the channel how much I love Fog of War Sudoku puzzles. And this is the latest in a whole series. Actually we've, we've, we've been covering these um, by Sandra and Nala. And Nala is of course the dog Nala. Do I have a picture of Nala to hand? I might have. Yes. Yes. This was the picture for the, for the, um, uh, I think it was called Missing Shoes in which Nala the dog, you see a very pretty dog, um, stole Sandra's shoes. Now this one is called Looking for a Friend. Um, I don't know what that means. I have skimmed through the rules. Uh, there is reference to finding a friend in the backyard. Uh, so there may be there may be a friend hidden in the grid. We do not know. But we will um, we'll have a look at this in a moment or two. In fact, I'm going to take this moment just to... This has been recommended to us a few times. But one of the recommendations came with an interesting um, story about this puzzle, which is apparently when it was first published, it was published with fog in this cell. Let me put grey in that cell. So it looked like this. And apparently about 25 people, including some fa fabulously good solvers, solved it and saw no issue. And then it was pointed out that the puzzle actually had um, a problem. It was broken. And it, so, so, so the email we had recommending this puzzle said it's a sort of interesting story. And it is. It shows how important it is. If you are a setter and you're going to send in puzzles, e.g. to Cracking the Cryptic, um, uh, it's really important to get them tested and tested properly. Because uh, if 25 good solvers can solve this puzzle with a grey cell here and think that, th that it's fine and yet it isn't, there's clearly something, uh, you know, it's clearly a very easy thing for a mistake to be made. So I, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and solve it obviously using this information and then it, if I remember I will try and work out why why this being grey would have caused a problem. Um, so that's a, a little conundrum, a little a little side story to today's treat. Um, now what else did I want to tell you about today? I, 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 my brain flits all over the place. Oh yeah, no, do I want to mention? I do want to mention this. You, I don't know if you ever get earworms, you know, bit, bits of music that just get in your head and you just can't get them out of your head. Well, I have, there's a new earworm that I have at the moment and it, it is the most fabulous song. It's by Hamish Hawk, who I'd, n I'd not heard of. This was recommended to me on Spotify. Um, have I got it? Did I snip it? I think I did. Yeah. The Mauritian Badminton Doubles Champion, 1973. I recommend you go and listen to this. You can see, actually, look, it's hardly had any views on YouTube. I don't know why Spotify recommended it to me, but I'm jolly glad it did. This song is an absolute banger. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I'm not, I'll say no more than that. I will leave it to the comments to judge whether or not my taste in music is up to snuff or not. Um, but, I, but I hope you'll agree it is. Uh, anyway, Hamish Hawk recommended. Um, other than that, just a birthday. Alex, I think I'm late with this as well. I'm useless. Hey, Alex, it was your 30th birthday on the 14th. I'm jolly sorry. I missed it by a day or so. Uh, I know this because your partner, Carolina, wrote to us and said you'd appreciate a shout out. And you watch the channel and you like the apps. And that's that makes you the salt of the earth as far as I'm, I'm concerned. A, a very, very good watcher of Cracking the Cryptic. So, Alex, we wish you a very, we hope you had a very, very happy birthday. Um, very happy 30th birthday. And I hope that you had lots of fantastic chocolate cake. Um, other than that, the only other thing that's going on, of course, is on pay, over on Patreon. We have tennis, uh, the, the tennis Sudoku hunt, courtesy of Glum Hippo, no less. Loads of you enjoying that. I think some of you struggling with the final puzzle a little bit. Don't blame you. Pretty tough, that final puzzle. Do persevere. And if you are stuck, do remember uh, there is a Patreon only channel on the fan discord server where there are lots of people who are prepared to help. So you might find you might find one or two hints and tips there if you're looking to just nudge yourselves over that final hurdle. Anyway, now I get to I get to do a fog of war puzzle. Let me read you the rules to Looking for a Friend by Sandra and Nala. They are as follows. Um, after it gets dark, Nala loves to go outside and look for new friends in our backyard. Will she find one today? 
normal Sudoku rules apply. So we need to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box. Um, numbers on a thermometer strictly increase as they move away from the bulb towards the tip. So somewhere in here are thermometer shapes. I think these are part of thermometer shapes. Um, so a thermometer, let, I mean, can I actually do this with the pen tool maybe? I think I can. A thermometer will look something like this. That could be a thermometer. And the idea is that whatever you put in the bulb of the thermometer, just as in, in a real thermometer, that would be the lowest temperature. So it must be the smallest digit in a Sudoku thermometer. So this digit could be a one. Now I'm not gonna put one in there in case it turns out that this is an actual one in the puzzle, because if I did put one here, then it would clear the fog from the surrounding area. And the idea, of course, with Fog of War Sudoku is that you deduce logically every digit. So you gradually clear the fog as the constructor intended you to do. So if this was a one though, this would have to be bigger than one. It doesn't have to be two, that would be three, five, eight. One, three, five, eight would be an absolutely legitimate way um, to fill a thermometer. Um, it says there is only one tip for each thermometer and each thermometer has its own color. Right, so I think that means that these are in they, these are from the same thermometer, as well as being thermometer pieces, they're from the same thermometer. Elements of the same color are connected, yes. Okay, so that they these are connected thermometer pieces. Now, digits separated by a white dot, you can just see there's a white dot emerging from the fog here. They are consecutive digits. So if this was a one, this would have to be a two. If this was a four, this would have to be a three or a five in order to make sure that the domino contained consecutive digits. Digits separated by a black dot are in a ratio of one to two. So these two cells, what that's saying in a sort of slightly complicated way is that one of the digits is double the other. So if that was three, that would have to be six. Um, because it couldn't be one and a half. <laughs> uh, not all possible dots are given and there is no negative constraint. So why why is that in there? Mark and I am and are on whether or not we want to include rules like this actually that not all possible dots are given. I, I'm sort of I'm sort of minded to say that we might stop including this and then we would only mention anything to do with not all possible dots being given in puzzles which are you know where that rule is important um, because what this is saying is that these two cells for example imagine there was no fog and there was there was no white dot on the join of these two cells what what we're being told is that it's fine for these digits to be consecutive just because there's no white dot doesn't mean that these two cells can't be consecutive digits. There doesn't have to be a white dot between every consecutive pair, uh, or indeed between, there doesn't have to be a black dot between every domino that contains digits with a one to two ratio. Um, so it, it, it's a very simple constraint. And I think if you'd never done Sudoku before, it wouldn't even occur to you to worry about this. Um, but yeah, but it's become a bit of a part of the lexicon, hasn't it? And I'm not, I'm not sure it's helpful to new solvers to have that qualification in there. Um, anyway, let's move on. Additionally, the grid is partially covered in fog and placing correct digits will clear the fog from the surrounding cells, possibly revealing more clues. So the idea as usual with fog of war puzzles is that you work on the bits of the puzzle you can see, you see what you can deduce. Hopefully that we will be able to deduce a will be able to deduce a digit that goes somewhere around here. And then when we place that digit, more of the puzzle will be revealed and it will be jolly fine too. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. I'm gonna restart my clock and now I get to play. Let's get cracking. So I presume, well, there's only one place we can start. Um, oh, somebody is beeping. Um, now, well, maybe maybe what we do is we go to the pen tool, actually. And I was, rather than uh, drawing bulbs of thermometers, let's just draw what we can see about how this thermometer moves. So we can't actually see very much, to be honest. Um, so it's got to be something to do with the black dot here. But the problem, the problem I immediately see with the black dot is that it could be a one-two pair, couldn't it? One, two, three. 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's ludicrous, but it could do that. It could go one, two, then two is consecutive with three, and then providing it sorts of heads over here immediately, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine would work. But of course this could, and probably it's more likely, it goes the other way around. So if we start with a one here, what, yeah, one, two, four, uh, and then you could do wiggling probably, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, I mean, I did notice that two, does two always have to be here? Maybe that's the point. What if this... What if we try and make this not two? Does that give us a problem? If this is not two... Well, the only way it could be three... It's quite... Well, it could be three if it goes two, three, six. But that's too much then. Because to get to here... 7, 8, 9, 10 is how we would have to go. And obviously you can't put 10 in a Sudoku. And if we go the other way, then we can't, you could never make this 3 because you can never make this 2 or, or 1 because it's on a black dot ratio. So 3 is definitely not possible there. What about 4? 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, no, that doesn't work. Two, four, five. What about the other way then? Um, three, four. And that now we have to be going up, don't we? So that becomes eight. So four, I don't think works. That's weird. So if three and well, three and four don't work, nothing higher than that is going to work because you can see this is at least a one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a minimum of a seven-length thermometer. So we can't be including enormous digits over this side, otherwise this is going to definitely be more than 10. I think, that, I think the thing we might be having to conclude is that this is a 2. It clearly can't be a 1, by the way, because if that's a 1, that will be a 2, and that will be a 2, and that really won't work. So I'm, ju I'm just going to double check one more time. I don't think this can be 4. So 2, 4, 5 is the best way. Then we'd have to go 6, we'd have to go 7, we'd need to get to here. Yeah, it doesn't work. So this is a two. Um, and let's just check that by putting it in the grid. And yeah. <laughs> it, oh, well, look, now now we're away. Um, right, so now that's got to be a one. Oh, look, this is going to do all sorts of things. One, two, this is now four by black dot logic. Five, six but then it depends. We can't see what's happening in the fog. You go five, six, seven, eight, nine. What's the minimum? One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, this square here is an eight or a nine, definitely. So there's, there's only one degree of freedom. This is gonna to have to be a seven or an eight. This is gonna to have to be a five or a six, because if it's seven, eight, nine, 10, we're going to break the world. So that this square has got to be a six or a seven. And it's just possible if that five, six, seven, eight, nine, or five, six, seven, eight, nine, it's just possible that there could be more cells of thermometer hidden in the fog that we don't know about. Um, right. So maybe we now turn our attention to the yellow thermometer. I don't see I don't think there's much else we can look at. Let's complete the yellow thermometer. So we can do that to complete it. It's not very long. One, two, three. It's a four cell thermo. But that could be a three. Um, that is, yeah, okay, this square is at least, a, oh, that's it. No, this is still restricted. This is at least five, isn't it? Because this can't be very small, this square is at least five, and it can't be more than seven, because this would be greater than nine. So that's five, six, or seven. There's a five, six, seven triple here. So one of these is a seven. Now, if it's that one, that'll have to go eight, nine. If it's that one, well, what's this digit? It's got to be more than five. It can't be six or seven. That is eight, and that's nine, and that's beautiful. Look, we've got another thermometer emerging from the fog, this time a pink thermometer. Let's do some pinking. The pink, pink. 
that it's definitely going into that square. And we know, don't we, that this is the tip. And this tip can't be a 9 or an 8. So that's a maximum of 7, 6, 5. It can't be 5 because that's going to bump into this 5, 6, 7 triple. So this square is 4 or less. 3, that can't be 2. So isn't it? doesn't this have to be 1? I'm not so sure about that. That's that's what that where that logic seemed to take me. But I'm just going to let let me just mull that over. Um, that's seven maximum. That cannot be five, six, or seven. So that's four maximum. That is three maximum. That is one. That is just a one. It can't be anything else. And so it has proved from our um, by revealing the fog. There's a one over here. There's a nine in this box. So one of my 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 great secrets <laughs> about thermometers is that nines and ones are the most restricted digits on thermometers. Nines can only go in the tips of thermometers because if you try if we tried to put a nine there and this thermometer came here, well this square would be at least a ten. None of those is a tip. None of these is a nine. So nine must go there, and that's correct. And we get and we get a bulb here. Uh, but I, what I should do is pencil mark this thermometer more more completely. This this square here could be a two, couldn't it? This square here could be a three, and then it's and then all bets are off because one, two, three. This could be four, five, or six, and this could be five, six, or seven. Uh, but we do know, I suppose, the exact shape look of the green thermometer. Well, although, I'm just wondering, is it possible that green thermometer would come into this square here? Or can we assume it ends because we can't? I mean, could it do that? Let me just read the rules again. Does it say that thermometers... Hmm. No, it doesn't say they can't overlap. So we need to be a bit careful with any assumptions we make about this square here. This square can't be a 1, so this is at least 2. 3, 4, 5. So that square is at least a 6. So it's 6, 7 or 8, I think. So this is the right. So, well, no, it could be... Hmm. Oh, sorry, I've got this, haven't I? Look, oh, no, it's done. There's a 6, 7 pair in here because this is a five six seven triple so that square is an eight i believe and that right that that uh, negates any possibility we had of extending the green thermo right so let's let's good lift this thermometer then two three four i think that's all the options isn't it so there's a two three four triple uh, it can't be five because six seven eight and then we would we would not increase so three, four, five, four, five, six, five, six, seven. Now, what what what's removed from this thermometer? Um, eight. Look, in this box is in one of those three squares. So eight is in a domino at the top of column eight. Two, three, and no. Okay. Um, We've got a white dot here. We've got a purple thermometer that's sort of sticking out of the fog there. Five, six, seven. Right, so in, in row seven, look, we've we've approximately placed five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So everything else has got to be very low digits. There's definitely got to be a one and a two over on the left-hand side. So, right, so this blue thermometer here, which definitely goes into this square, doesn't go into this square. So that's that sort of an X, because this square is not big enough to take it. So it, it either closes like this, or it goes up and then closes. Which is, is that important? This square here, let's just think about this square, that's three or five or six no okay that's not where we need to look i don't think um eight is down here in box seven there's a black dot that's emerged from the fog down here 
Right, okay, so... How... yeah. So there is a 2 on this black dot, we can say, but it's sort of by Sudoku a bit. Where do 1, 2 and 4 go in box 8? And the answer is we don't really know, but we do know that they're in the this little 2x2 two two area. That's That's definitely true. Now, how many of these digits could we leave off this black dot then? And the answer to that is a maximum of one. Um, if, if, we, if, we, if, we, if we tried to cram, or so, so we could leave two off, but there would have to be, one of these digits at least has to be on the black dot. Now, if you put four on the black dot, it has to be accompanied by two because eight has gone. If you put one on the black dot, it has to be accompanied by two because one and two are the, one is the, or two is the only digit that's double one because we can't put half in the puzzle. So this definitely must have two on it, either how, some way or the other. And that, right, that's beautiful. So now that, that's a two, that's the point of this, isn't it? Now this is a two, that, this is not a two, the bulb of the green thermo is not a two. So that takes three, four and five out of the consecutive digits along the thermo. Now, where does three go in this box? It can't go there anymore, so 3 is over with the 8. Um, bobbins, that didn't do anything. Okay, I thought that was going to be profound. Uh, okay, so this square is 3 or 9, because it can't be 5, 6, 7, 8, or 1, 2, or 4. So that digit, oh no, it could still go in this square. So we don't, we don't know where that digit goes in this box. We know it's in one of those two positions. Um, oh, and we were doing so well. Well, now we're not. <laughs> now we've got stuck, <laughs> properly stuck. What on earth do we do next? Oh, right, okay, sorry. Look, this is staring at me in the face. Four, five, and six are a triple in this column, so that's got to be a seven. That really didn't do anything. Uh, oh, oh no, yes, it did. Actually, I'm aligning this digit somewhat unfairly. It's, it's making this an eight. Now, that's going to reveal... Well, that's now a nine. And this blue thermometer, look, it didn't, it didn't meander. So it moved with alacrity from row seven, column four to row six, column three. But that means we don't, we don't know what this digit is. If it had, if it had meandered, we would know this was a six. That this square here can't be a five because there would be too many high digits. Um, well, no, the simpler way of saying it is if that's a five, you can't put five in that string. Because if that's a 5, you're knocking 5 out of here by Sudoku. And obviously this is on the same thermo as the 5, so it has to be higher than 5. So 5 could go in none of those squares. So that's not 5. Now, if it's... No, it doesn't work if it's 6. It doesn't work the same way. Then this is 5, and that could be either 6 or 7. And that, that frees up a degree of... It sort of allows space for it to work. Um, oh, all right, but look, we've, we've got some sort of orange thing emerging from the fog. So let's draw the orange thing. That's doing at least this. Uh, this is clearly the tip. So that's a maximum of eight, seven, six, five, four. Ah. Well, okay, but there isn't there isn't a great deal of latitude here, to be honest, because uh, one and two can't go in this square. So even if this is the bulb, well, whether or not this is the bulb, it is a maximum. It's a minimum of three. So this is a minimum of four. So this is a minimum of five, this is a minimum of six, and this is a minimum of seven. So there's there's definitely something going on on this orange thing. And how does this dot work? Uh, 
Right, right. That this dot is important actually, because if we if we push this up to a maximum value, if this is six, this has to be seven. It can't be less than seven, can it? But then that's got to be five. Oh, hang on, no, that's all right. Oh, no, so it's weird. It affects these digits, actually. I'm not... Uh, right, OK, I misunderstood how this was working, but it's quite clever, I think. Right, so I'm going to change... I'm going to change tack. I was trying to think about it from the point of view of if that's six. Let's try and think about it from can this be five? But a can this be five perspective? If this is five... It doesn't work because that has to be six and that has to be seven and that has no fill because there is nothing consecutive with six that can go into this square because this is five and this is seven. So this cannot be five and has to be four. Uh, and it was right. Okay, and there's a bolt. Right. So that's three. And that three is jolly naughty. He's knocking two threes out of the corner. Let's check this. Oh, no, the other side is quite good. You could have a three in either corner on the other side. Oh, three, four pair in column eight. I've never seen. Did I see that? I don't think I did. No, OK. Um, right, so what? how does this work then? What's this digit? This digit, this is at least five. This cannot be four. So this is five, six or seven. But I'm very dubious as to whether this can be seven. If that's six, that needs to be seven, and that cannot be seven. Yeah, and if this is... Yeah, so this cannot be seven. So in fact, there's a five-six pair now here. The logic around this thermo is strange. It really is weird, but it's very clever. This The way this white dot works is really pretty. And that's, get, that's made this a seven, and it's made this an eight. And now this, there's a black dot that's emerged from the fog. There's a great big purple thing that's come out of the fog. Let's try and... I don't have purple in my palette, so I'm going to do it like that. Um, now, the interesting way round would be if this is a low number, because it couldn't be one or two. So if that was three, four, five, that would have to be nine, actually. That looks right, though, doesn't it? The fact there's just enough room for this to be a nine. Uh, this black dot hasn't got four on it. So it's either it's either a one-two pair or it's a three-six pair. That's, that's forced, I think. Um, can't be two four, can't be four eight. So if that was one two, then then whichever side of this is the uh, the bulb end. Well, actually, how? Oh, hang on, we know that's not the bulb end. It's not got a bulb on it. Oh, bobbins! <laughs> Apologies. This is clearly not the bulb end. It doesn't have a bulb. So the bulb end must be the other end. Okay. So this is a high number. Uh, one two three. It's at least a four. So this is a five, four three. This is five at least. Um, oh, I feel like I should be able to do something profound with that. It can be five, six, or nine, I think. No, actually, it can't be nine. Because if it was nine, that square would be an eight to be consecutive. And the eight seems to be up there in box three. So that's not nine. That's five or six only. So this is four, five, six or seven. And it's not seven. So, right. OK, so here is a tiny little point. Every consecutive pair of digits in the world, <laughs> in the universe even, has to have an odd digit and an even digit. Well, what's the odd digit that's going on this pair? It's got to be five, doesn't it, now? It doesn't seem to do anything, but I think it's true. OK, but if this is a maximum of six now, that's a maximum of five, four, three. So this square here is one, two or three. 
this is 2, 3 or 4, this is 3, 4 or 5. Bother. <laughs> um, that square there is not 4 because it sees 4, that square is not 3. This is, okay, this square is in the middle of a thermometer, isn't it? You can see that the, this thermometer, it's like a red thermometer. It's sort of doing that at least. And that can't be a one because it's in the middle of the thermometer. So whatever this is now is quite interesting for the black dot, I think. Because if that's a two, it's fixing this as a three, six pair. And if it's three, it's forcing this to be a one, two pair. So there's a virtue, so I can place two. Yes, that's absolutely beautiful. Good grief. I can place two in this box, I'm going to claim. Because, because between these three digits, there is a two in one of them. And therefore there is no two in those squares and there's no two in this square. So that seems to have to be a two. That is going to re reveal nothing. Um, one, what else do we need here? One, seven, and nine. Oh, nine. Nine is down with the ones. So this is a nine, one pair. Uh, no. Uh, this is a seven by Sudoku. This, the central cell of the grid is a seven by Sudoku. Right, let's have a look at the middle box. Three, five, and six to place. And that's going to be marvelous for the following reason. Come on, brain, think of a reason. There's a seven down here. There's no eight here. I forgot to think about why that square... I'll have to go back to that at the end. Why can't this square be grey uh, or foggy? Um, do we know anything about that yet? Don't know. <laughs> do we know anything about... Oh, yes we do. Good grief. Okay, uh, Sudoku on this box is what we need to do, I think. Look, five, six, seven, and eight. Where do they go in this box? Well, they don't go in their own column and they don't go along this red line thing. So they've all got to hide in this little two by two. So that's a five, six, seven, eight. Quadruple seven doesn't live in there. Eight doesn't live in there. Right, okay, well that's, that's still okay. That's still okay. If we look at row eight now, I've got a five, six, seven triple, and that's going to make this square have to be a four. And that was right, because it revealed the fog. So that's a three, that's a four. What is that? Is that a three in the corner? I think that's going to be, look, it looks like it's a big three in the corner. That's weird. But there is, I think there's a three in the corner. This is five. This is six. This is five, this is six, this is three. Uh, we have not put what digit in four into this row. Three's got to go here, this has got to be eight, this has got to be six, this has got to be five. If this is six, this is five. Uh, look, it seems to be working a bit now. Uh, what's going on in this column though? That's no longer three. Now if that's no longer three, this uh, what's that doing? Nothing, I don't think. No, I know, three would be taking four out of this, but this already couldn't be four. Oh, five, there we go. So there's a four in the middle of this box. That's going to do something, surely. Um, four in box one is now in one of two places where four is in that cell or that cell no it's not in this cell by four each ah and the other thing i'm now seeing suddenly as my sudoku brain slowly kicks into gear that can't be six so that can't be three on the black dot four is in the corner clearing fog away that's not a four so surely that's got to be yeah this has got to be a bulb now oh no no it does have to be a bulb there's nowhere else you could hide a bulb this can't be bulb it's a five six or a seven so this is a very, uh, well, the problem is this digit can probably be just about anything. It's got to be at least three. 
It's got to be at least three. And it could be, it can't be four. If it's, okay, so if it's not three, it's not four, five, six, seven, or eight, it's nine. That is only able to be three or nine, but unfortunately, that doesn't actually tell us what it is. That's quite extraordinary. Four is not in those squares. So, four, oh, f oh, right, look, where does four go in box uh, eight? It's got to go there. And we, I think we worked out that there was a two on the black dot. So these squares are from one, look, this is good, one, three, and nine. Oh, I was going to say, well, it's not actually, is it? That's just making use of the five, six, seven triple I found earlier. Um, oh, goodness. Uh, da, 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 da. I've got that song in my head. To ride a cathedral, I need a ballpoint pen. Um... Dum, dum, dum. What's it going to be then? The Mauritian badminton doubles champion 1973. And Crystal Loren smiles down on me. Um, that's this six has to be lower than the digit in there, so that's got to be seven. Um, now this must be done with what's this? <laughs> Three, five, six, and nine. I don't know. Uh I can I write three in a corner here? Is that is that what I'm meant to do? I'm not sure. I, I better not, just in case I'm not meant to know that that's a three. Um Right, okay, what, what else can we do here then? How else are we meant to visualize this? Uh, hang on, if this is now two or three, this certainly can't be three. So that's now come right down, that's one or two. Ah, that's it, there you go. That can't be a one, two pair on the black dot. It would break this square, that's lovely as well, isn't it? So that's got to be six, that's got to be three. That's got to be five. So that's three, that's two, that's one, that's one, that's nine. These squares, oh, this is consecutive digits, look. So that's got to be six to be consecutive with five. Uh, and down here, we're left with seven and eight, and we know the order. So eight and seven go into the grid. That square becomes a four, that square becomes a nine. Good grief, this is a three. Oh, it's just, it's all, it's all starting to unwind now. One is in one of those two squares. Five, six here. This becomes a seven. So seven is in one of these two squares. One, five, and six here. One, five, six. Uh, that's not... Well, this is a one in the corner. So up here, we need three, four... No, not three, four. Two, three, and nine. And that's not three. I uh, don't know how to do that, but I've got a five, six pair in column, uh, column thingy. So this is a one, seven pair. Still not quite resolved. And these two squares, are, um, well, it's five, six and eight in some order. Five, six, eight with this not allowed to be six. Okay, so it's still not oh look now i've got a well i think i've had this five six pair let's let's do sudoku on row three of the grid where we've not placed one two eight and nine so that's a naked single that's got to be a two therefore this is a nine and we need one and eight and therefore that's got to be eight that's got to be one and this square should be known shouldn't it that's got to be five so that's going to give me a five no no, it's about that's not well. It gives me an eight here. Oh, no! <laughs> what is what is that? A hedgehog? There's <laughs> a hedgehog in there. I thought that was going to be a three. That is not a three. It's a hedgehog. Um. Oh, hello, hedgehog. Is this uh, is this the friend that Nala found in the backyard? Look for new friends in our backyard. Well, yeah. Okay, hedgehogs. Um. Can't remember. I think I think I did show on the channel the hedgehog that I had in my garden few months ago um 
And it was an amazing hedgehog because the hedgehog picked up the baby hedgehog and carried it in her mouth into the woods. Um, anyway, that's another story. Let's try this this column. We can put nine in at the top, I think. Uh, so this is a one-two pair. What's going on here? Why isn't why isn't this? Oh, I see. I've got a two-three pair here. So this is one. This is two. Ah, and I do. I get not only do I get a hedgehog in the corner, I get a three in the corner. I think that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion or proving its position. Um, okay. Oh, I see. And that being a three, of course, I, I've not been thinking about the black dot at all, which has probably been available for ages. But yeah, that that's obviously got to be in a, a suitable ratio. Uh, five and six go down here. This square here has got to be greater than two by thermologic. That's going to place a nine here. And we need five, seven, and eight. So we can just fill this in. Seven, eight, five. Beautiful. What a lovely puzzle. The solution is correct. Nala enjoyed meeting the hedgehog. <laughs> the downside is that she, she picked up a flea from it. Oh dear. Oh dear, just one flea. That's, um, or is a flea the same as a tick? I don't know. Well, a tick is not a very nice thing. I hope I hope it didn't mean a tick. Um, but a flea, if it was just one flea, that's a very careful count of fleas that were transferred from hedgehog to Nala. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just, it's very cool. 405 people have solved that puzzle already. Wow, these fog of war puzzles and well, Sandra and Nala's puzzles are very, very popular with good reason. That was lovely. That was lovely. It was, it wasn't, it wasn't desperately straightforward. Oh, I know what I want to do. I want to have a look at the start again. Let's go back to the start. Now, now what would we, we worked out this was a two, didn't we? Now, so if this was gray, what are we saying then? Is it, well, it must be, it must be, I think, the case that there's, it's potentially not possible to say that this is definitely a two. So what else could it be? Could it be four, two, four, five, six? That's it. Right. So this is the point. And that is very easy to miss, actually. So imagine this was grey and you were trying to plot how this thermo moved. So we can see it's doing it's doing this. But what you can't rule out here is that it's doing that. And if the thermo was doing that, how would we, we know that this was a two on our logic because you couldn't, the thermo couldn't do this. But if you'd been studying the puzzle with this as fog, trying to work out what this digit was, what's to stop two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I think the answer is nothing at all. And therefore you'd have labeled this cell as two or four and probably not been able to solve it. And that's why the puzzle was broken. Isn't that cool? That's really, that's very interesting, actually. It's a complete lesson in terms of um, how careful you have to be when setting puzzles. I guess, especially with thermometers, because, um, you know, thermometers are difficult creatures to manage. They, they can bend themselves into some serious, seriously twisty shapes. Uh, they'd be very good at twister. Uh, me, not so good at Twister. Um, but anyway, that's that, that I think is the lesson for this, this square here. Let me know in the comments whether you had a go at the puzzle. I hope you did. Um, I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. Go and check out Hamish Hawk and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.